all right guys now we are going to discuss about the arterial supply of the stomach basically there are five main branches or five main arteries that are supplying one is the right gastric artery right gastric artery other one is the left gastric artery one is the right gastro epiploic artery right gastro epiploic artery another one is the left gastro epiploic artery and another one is the short gastric arteries five main branches that are supplying the stomach that are the right gastric artery left gastric artery right gastro epiploic artery left gastro epiploic artery and short gastric arteries i am going to draw and show these arteries how they are supplying the stomach stomach this is the inferior end of the esophagus this is the stomach so basically what happens is as the abdominal aorta descends down a small branch called the celiac trunk arises from the abdominal aorta it divides into two main branches one is the common hepatic artery and another one is the splenic artery so celiac trunk divides into two branches common hepatic artery and the splenic artery what happens is splenic artery goes behind the stomach so i'm drawing it in dotted line it goes behind the stomach and supplies the spleen and the common hepatic artery will go like this and divides into two main branches one is the gastro duodenal artery and the hepatic artery so the common hepatic artery is dividing into gastro duodenal artery and the hepatic artery as the hepatic artery goes to the liver it divides into two further branches called the right hepatic artery and the left hepatic artery and a small twig from the right hepatic artery called the cystic artery which goes to the gallbladder and this gastro duodenal artery it supplies the superior part of the duodenum through the superior gastro duodenal artery and it goes behind the duodenum to give the retro duodenal artery and it comes out like this and it gives one more branch called the superior pancreatico duodenal artery and it ends up by supplying the along the greater curvature of the stomach called as the right gastro epiploic artery so the gastro duodenal artery it is giving a branch called the supra duodenal artery and it is going behind the duodenum to give the retro duodenal artery and it is going along to become the right gastro epiploic artery by giving a branch called superior pancreatico duodenal artery a small branch from the celiac trunk will also come like this this is called the left gastric artery and it supplies along the lesser curvature of the stomach and another branch from the common hepatic artery called the right gastric artery it supplies along the lesser curvature of the stomach up to the pylorus and the splenic artery that we have discussed which is coming from the celiac trunk it gives a few branches maybe 5 6 7 branches these are called the short gastric arteries and another major branch of the splenic artery called the left gastro epiploic artery which supplies along the greater curvature of the stomach and the right gastro epiploic artery which supplies along the greater curvature of the stomach up to the pylorus so i'm going to write them this is the celiac trunk okay from the abdominal part of the aorta and a small twig from the celiac trunk called the left gastric artery it is supplying along the lesser curvature of the stomach from the cardiac part and to the body and so the celiac trunk is dividing into splenic and common hepatic artery this one is the splenic artery and uh, arteries so arising from the splenic artery are the short gastric arteries short gastric arteries supplying of the fundic region of the stomach and another branch is the left gastro epiploic artery left gastro epiploic artery which is supplying along the greater curvature stomach of the body then and the, from the this one the, the branch from the celiac trunk which is this this is the common hepatic artery right 
common hepatic artery and it is giving a another branch which is nothing but the right gastric artery which is supplying along the lesser curvature of the stomach up to the pylorus from the common hepatic artery it is giving off two branches right one is the gastro duodenal artery this one and another one is the hepatic artery this was the common hepatic now it divides into hepatic artery and gastro duodenal artery what does the hepatic artery do it goes up divides into right hepatic artery and the left hepatic artery a small tick from the right hepatic artery this one this is called as the cystic artery which supplies the gallbladder all right and the gastro duodenal artery which is coming down like this it is giving one branch this is known as the superior pancreatico duodenal artery pancreatico duodenal artery and it is ending by becoming the right gastro epiploic artery this one this is the right gastro epiploic artery so what are the main five branches that i told which supply the stomach the left gastric artery right gastric artery short gastric arteries left gastro epiploic artery and the right gastro epiploic artery so the arterial supply of the stomach is very easy i am going to repeat it one more time listen properly celiac tract a branch of the abdominal aorta it is giving off two main branches one is the splenic artery and another one is the common hepatic artery and a small branch called the left gastric artery is arising from the celiac tract to supply along the lesser curvature of the stomach from the cardiac fundic and the body of the stomach and another branch which is the common hepatic artery a small branch right gastric artery is arising and it is supplying along the lesser curvature of the stomach up to the pylorus and common hepatic artery is dividing into two branches one is the hepatic artery and the another one is the gastro duodenal artery the hepatic artery is further dividing into two main branches right hepatic and the left hepatic artery and a small tweak from the right hepatic artery called the cystic artery will supply the gallbladder and the gastro duodenal artery arising from the common hepatic artery will supply the duodenum through the supra duodenal and retro duodenal artery and it is uh, coming down and ending up by becoming the right gastro epiploic artery and another branch from the gastro duodenal which is the superior pancreatic duodenal artery and the splenic artery which is going to the spleen will give short gastric arteries which is supplying the fundic region of the stomach and it is giving another branch called the left gastro epiploic artery supplying the greater curvature of the stomach of the body so this is the arterial supply of the stomach now we are going to discuss about the venous drainage of the stomach discuss about the venous drainage of the stomach venous drainage of the stomach is as simple as the arterial supply of the stomach if you know the arterial supply venous drainage becomes very simple we know the five main arteries that are supplying the stomach right the right gastric artery left gastric artery right gastro epiploic artery left gastro epiploic artery and the short gastric arteries the same arteries will end up to become the veins which is nothing but that is the right gastric veins right gastric veins the left gastric vein right gastro epiploic vein right gastro epiploic vein the left gastro epiploic vein and the short gastric veins okay venous drainage of the stomach includes right gastric vein left gastric vein right gastro epiploic vein left gastro epiploic vein and short gastric veins now i'm going to draw the stomach to see how does how do the veins drain the stomach drawing the stomach this is the inferior end of the esophagus this is the stomach so i told you venous drainage of the stomach includes the left gastric vein right this is the left gastric vein and the right gastric vein i am going to uh, tell you how does the veins uh, these veins drain into what veins this is the right gastric vein supplying the same part where does the arterial supply the same place the veins also drain so the right gastro epiploic artery supplied here so the vein will drain here this is the right gastro epiploic vein and another one is the left gastro epiploic vein and another one is the short gastric veins so this is the 
left gastric vein right gastric vein right gastroepiploic vein left gastroepiploic vein and the short gastric veins so these short gastric veins and left gastroepiploic vein will drain into the splenic vein yes they were given off by the splenic artery right so they are also drained by the splenic vein this is the splenic vein so the left gastro the left gastric vein will drain into the portal vein the right gastric vein will drain into the portal vein and the right gastro epiploic vein will drain into the superior mesenteric vein this is the splenic vein which goes to the portal vein this is the superior mesenteric vein and another one which is known, the, known as the inferior mesenteric vein will anastomose with the superior mesenteric vein and these two veins will combine to the portal vein okay i'm going to explain once more just listen to me this is the short gastric vein and the left gastro epiploic vein they are drained into the splenic vein this one's a splenic vein splenic vein is joined by the inferior mesenteric vein okay and they'll come they'll join with the this one this is the superior mesenteric vein and it is uh, drained by this right gastro epiploic vein is draining into the superior mesenteric vein and the left gastric vein and the right gastric vein they are joining the portal vein so the splenic vein joined by the inferior mesenteric vein and superior mesenteric vein finally become the portal vein so this is the right gastric vein uh, this is the left gastric vein right gastric vein right gastro epiploic vein left gastro epiploic vein and the short gastric veins this is the venous drainage of the stomach as if you know the arterial supply the venous drainage becomes very simple and sometimes they may ask where do where do these veins drain into so we know that left gastric and right gastric vein will drain into the portal vein right gastro epiploic vein will drain into the superior mesenteric vein and the short gastric veins and the left gastro epiploic vein will drain into the splenic vein this is venous drainage of the stomach now we are going to discuss about the lymphatic drainage of the stomach lymphatic drainage of the stomach so first i am going to write the nodes that are draining the stomach one is the right gastric nodes it is just similar as the arterial supply and the venous drainage now you know that arterial supply is by the right gastric left gastric right gastro epiploic left gastro epiploic and short gastric arteries and corresponding veins and this is not corresponding nodes just some nodes will correspond which is nothing but as the right gastric nodes right gastric nodes the left gastric nodes left gastric nodes third one is the right gastro epiploic nodes right gastro epiploic nodes and the fourth one is the pancreatico splenic nodes pancreatico splenic nodes splenic nodes and another one is the pyloric nodes pyloric nodes and you may include the hepatic nodes as well so the lymphatic drainage of the stomach includes right gastric nodes left gastric nodes right gastro epiploic nodes pancreatic or splenic nodes pyloric nodes and the hepatic nodes now i am going to draw the stomach to show you how these nodes are drained i am drawing the stomach this is the inferior end of the esophagus this is the stomach to make it a for a better understanding we are dividing the stomach into four regions this one line you divide the stomach in half like this and one division here another division here okay to make it for a better understanding we are doing it like this so we can name it number 1 2 3 and 4 okay so now 
where does the number 3 drain into this drains into pancreatico splenic nodes pancreatico splenic nodes and 2 will drain into the right gastro epiploic nodes gastro epiploic nodes and this part near the pylorus this will drain into the pyloric nodes pyloric nodes from one this will drain into the left gastric nodes left gastric nodes and this region four is draining into the the right gastric nodes right gastric nodes this number three will drain into the pancreatic splenic nodes this drains into the right gastroepiploic nodes this one pyloric nodes and four region will drain into the right gastric nodes and one region will drain into the left gastric nodes now i am going to tell you how these nodes will be connected this left and the right gastric nodes will further drain into this is known as the celiac nodes right celiac nodes this left gastric nodes and right gastric nodes will drain into the celiac nodes and here we have the hepatic nodes this pyloric nodes will drain into the hepatic nodes this hepatic nodes will further drain into the celiac nodes and the lymph from the celiac nodes will drain into the cisterna chylae cisterna chylae of the thoracic duct you know thoracic duct are the largest lymph vessel of the body so from the celiac nodes they will drain into the cisterna chylae of the thoracic duct to make it for a better understanding the lymphatic drainage of the stomach is divided into the four regions and each region will drain into the separate nodes and these nodes are finally drained into the celiac nodes which is draining into cisterna chylae of the thoracic duct now we are going to discuss about the nerve supply of the stomach right? We are discussing about the nerve supply of the stomach. So, stomach has both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic sympathetic nerve supply. Sympathetic plus parasympathetic. It has both the innervations. Coming to the sympathetic innervation, sympathetic innervation is mainly by the T6 to T10 spinal nerves. Spinal nerves. T6 to T10 spinal nerves. And they these nerves run along run along the these, these nerves are nothing but greater splanking nerves. Greater splanking nerves. These run along the arteries to supply the stomach. They are mainly vasomotor in nature vasomotor in nature they supply the muscle of the pylorus and they inhibit the gastric secretions inhibit gastric secretions so the sympathetic supply is mainly by the from the t6 to t8 and spinal nerves along the greater splanctic nerves which are vasomotor in nature they supply the muscle of the pylorus and they inhibit the gastric secretions of the stomach now coming to the parasympathetic nerve supply coming to the parasympathetic innervation of the stomach so parasympathetic innervation is mainly from the 10th cranial nerve 10th cranial nerve which is nothing but as the vagus nerve both the right and the left vagus nerve will supply the stomach now i am telling about the nerve supply of the stomach uh, this is the anterior part of the stomach anterior part of the stomach so anterior part of the stomach is mainly supplied by the 
left vagus nerve it is dividing into two one is the anterior vagal trunk and the posterior vagal trunk anterior vagal trunk is mainly by the left vagus nerve and partly by the right vagus nerve and posterior vagal trunk is mainly by the right vagus nerve and partly by the left vagus nerve so this is the anterior vagal trunk which is mainly by the left vagus nerve and it is dividing into three main branches one is the celiac branch the celiac branch will go to the celiac ganglion celiac ganglion and another one branch is the hepatic branch of the vagal anterior vagal trunk which goes along the lesser omentum to the porta hepatis supplying the liver and the gallbladder this is the hepatic branch hepatic branch and the third branch is the largest branch this is called as the anterior nerve of letter jet this is no, this one is known as the anterior nerve of letter jet this is one of the largest branch and it is it mainly forms the bulk of the anterior vagal trunk which supplies the anterior portion of the stomach now we will see about the posterior nerve innervation of the stomach the stomach this is the inferior end of the esophagus this is the stomach so what happens is this is the posterior vagal trunk i am drawing in the dotted line because it's in the posterior side of the stomach so it also gives three main branches one is the hepatic branch another one is the uh, that is not the hepatic branch it is the celiac branch celiac branch so going to the celiac ganglion and the another branch is the this is the nerve of grassi nerve of grassi and another major branch of the posterior vagal trunk is nothing but similar to the anterior vagal trunk which is the posterior nerve of letter jet posterior nerve of letter jet which supplies along the posterior part of the stomach so the posterior vagal trunk will divide into three main branches one is the celiac branch going to the celiac ganglion and the branch is the nerve of grassi which supplies the fundic region of the stomach and the third branch is the posterior nerve of letter jet which is a major branch and supplies along the lesser curvature of the posterior part of the stomach so this is about the nerve supply of the stomach thank you guys thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed the channel please subscribe and comment and like and i have also released a video on stomach anatomy about external features and functions please go look at it and i am going to make one more video on the clinical aspects of the stomach and interior and stomach pad keep watching thank you guys